I'm going to share some of my experience because over the years in Mahatma Gandhi University, I could participate very close to 60 projects, both India and within India, within Kerala, and international projects. The total amount is very close to 30 crores of funding I got. So I'm going to share you some of my experience uh, to uh, submit a winning project proposal. I will go to the next slide. You see, the main component of a winning project proposal is strong idea, strong science, strong application. If your idea is not good, if your science is not strong, you will not get funding. Nowadays, our prime minister is always asking for some application with companies. So you also have to show what is the end use application of these research proposal. So these three points have to be made very strong. A strong idea, strong science, and strong application. Next slide. I'm going to show you the anatomy of a grant application process. You see, if you look at this cartoon, you can see a researcher. This researcher is actually a, a faculty member. A faculty member is always looking at new calls. So we have to be extremely vigilant on new calls. And we have to think about new ideas. Look at this. See, this is our, a faculty member, a researcher. He looks at the program announcement. Program announcement means a, a project call. It could be from DST, it could be from DBT, or it could be from any funding agency. And if you look at the other side, you can see the collaborators, the uh, staff members of the uh, DST or DBT, that is pro program staff. Whenever you have any uh, any any problem, you should always interact with the officers of the funding agency. So a faculty member has to look at the announcements. A faculty member has to interact with the uh, funding agencies. Uh, a faculty member go back. Uh, faculty member has to uh, has to have. Uh, can you go back to the, yes, a faculty member has to also find the collaborators. Then he has to think very seriously, read very carefully, and propose an idea. And submit an application, grant application. And these grant application will always go for a peer review process, you can see. Nobody will give you money just like that. It will go for peer application. That means it will be reviewed by a very good experts, number of experts. Sometimes four people, sometimes five people. If you look at European Union project, the, it will be reviewed by really international experts. Then it will go to the advisory board. There is always a committee. Committee looks at all the comments. And then it will go to the program staff. There could be different possibilities. The project could be accepted as it is. You get money. Very often, you get a revision. Look at this. this you get a revision. They say your project has to be modified. Then they have to again work on it and resubmit. Sometimes the project could be rejected. If your proposal is not good, it could be rejected. If you look at the present scenario in India, I would say around 70% of proposals will be rejected. They take only 25% of the proposal. If you look at European Union, right now they take only 5% of the proposal, 95% rejection. So rejection rate is nowadays very high. So we have to take extreme care in formulating a successful project. 
For that we need collaborators. Worldwide we need collaborators. Or within India we need collaborators. And you should understand the program announcement. If it is DST or whether well, so it is DST or DBT, DBT always looks for something related to bio. Vikram Sarafai Space Center, they have a program, uh, they have a beautiful program, but they always, their industry is more on the, more on the space. So every agency has their own interest. DST, on the other hand, supports all sorts of projects. So you have to really work very hard to get a proposal accepted. Next one, please. Next slide. I will go to the next slide. What determines which grants are funded? Scientific merit. That's very, very important. Science is very important. If you don't show a new science, if you show a new idea, if you if you if you cannot show a new new program, you will get you will never get funded. So merit of the science is very important. The second point is what are the requirements of that call? What are the interests of the of the agency? Very important. And the third factor is the funding. You see, some projects you, you cannot ask for calls. You can ask for maybe 40 lakhs, 50 lakhs. That also you should understand. What is the limit? If you submit a proposal to KSCST in Tiwandram, you know, they will not fund more than 50 lakhs or 40 lakhs. But DST, I could get funding up to 5 crores. DBT, I got funding up to, uh, I mean, 1 crore. So you also must understand the availability of the funding for a project. Next one, please. I will go to the next slide. Yes. Principles of success. Please go back. Principles of success. Understanding the agency mission. I already mentioned that. You have to really understand the call from a funding agency. If it is BRNS, you know their industry is more on atomic energy. If it is DRDO, their industry is more on the defense. So you have to really understand the mission of the agency. You see, I've got several projects from uh, Department of Electronics. Their industry is more on uh, electronics. So we have reoriented our interest to ways the interest of the agency. Secure collaborators is very, very important for a successful project. You always try to get lots of collaborators. If you look at my, my proposals, I have collaborators from different parts of the world. Some of the projects I have collaborators from National Chemical Laboratory. Some of the projects I have collaborators from the of Science Bangalore. Some of the projects I have submitted alone. But most of my projects, we have collaborators and mentors. You also have to have, practice a skill of writing grant application. That's extremely important. If there is a workshop on, uh, there is a, there's a workshop going on on a grant writing <coughs> process, you should, uh, you should never miss that. You should also understand the peer review process. You know, all the proposals will be peer reviewed by experts. So you have to have some understanding about the peer review process. I also mentioned a sentence here, don't compete, collaborate. That's what I do. You collaborate with your, uh, I mean, um, friends. Next slide. Again, understanding the agency mission, understanding the funding agency. You see, I have given some example. Department of Biotechnology in the country. They give funding only bio-related projects. Council of Industrial Research Organization, CSIR. Council of Industrial Research, CSIR. They fund industrial R&D projects. DuPont Company, I had a project from DuPont Company in, in US, an industry project. You know, they 
fund only projects of their company's interest. So you have to really understand. You know, I went to US for a conference, then I was invited by DuPont Company. I gave a talk, and they understood uh, my work. And they then we had a discussion. Eventually, I got a three years project funded by DuPont. So every agency has their own interest. Next slide, please. How do you make an application strategy? You have to really do good planning. Planning is very, very important. See, if you're submitting a European Union project, you know, you need to have a planning, you know, uh, sufficient advance. I remember we took almost eight months to submit a European Union project involving seven countries. You have to think very well. Your intellectual contribution is very, very important. You have to read a lot, especially high impact journals. I would always recommend you should read science, you should read nature, you should read Jack's. Uh, you know, such new journals you have to read. Of top journals, get new ideas. And write very carefully without any mistakes, without any grammatical errors, without any English mistakes. You write beautifully. Next one, please. I have a question. Why should we plan? Good concept and compelling scientific question. It's very important. A very good concept and very important scientific question. You must understand what has been done so far and what are the gaps. And you need to, you also have to have a very good understanding about the literature. Suppose I am going to submit a proposal on nanoparticle synthesis from uh, uh, through a green route then I should really understand who are the leaders in the world working in this field. So you have to really understand the subject very well. Next one, please. Next one, please. Next slide, please. See, I, I have made a, some sort of planning. Pre-submission planning timeline. You see, you have a, you have a planning phase it is counting down. You are a planning. You are a planning phase. Planning phase. You know, um, assess your yourself, your field, your resources, your collaborators, and you deal. You you have to do a lot of brainstorming. So this is the planning phase. Look at the writing phase. You have a very important uh, writing phase. See, that's very important. I have put, this is looking at my European project, you know, it was, it, it, it took almost more than uh, eight months. You see, look at the, look at the, uh, your uh, writing phase. Look at the feedback. You see, once you write a proposal, it is a huge one. You know, I will always take comments from uh, some of my good friends. And you have to edit it, you have to proofreading. Meet institution deadlines. You know, institution deadline means you have to get forwarding letter. In MGU, the forwarding letter is produced on the same day. But some institutions I know, even abroad, you have to probably wait for two weeks. I made it a rule in my university that if a faculty member is submitting a proposal to register, that will be submitted on the same day, forward the same day. But not in all cases. Sometimes people have to wait. That is, meet institution deadlines and receive it. This is, this is, this is actually some, some sort of pre-submission planning timeline. I, mean, I request everyone to look at this carefully and plan the whole program accordingly. Next slide, please. Good idea. The proposal should be very good. Good idea. Does it address an important problem? You must ask. If it is not addressing an important problem, you will not get funding. Will scientific knowledge be advanced? That's a very important aspect. 
whether this project will give some advancement of scientific knowledge. Does it build upon or expand current knowledge? These are some of the questions you have to ask. Next one, please. So you have to have, you have to attain good grantsmanship. I have made a few points here. What's a concept paper? It facilitates productive discussion with program official. Program official means, suppose it is a DST project, you have to discuss with the DST officers. You have to study the problem and the background. You have to really understand the significance of the project. The research question, your hypothesis, your analysis of your, uh, your design analysis and the composition of your team. You know, you have PI, co-PI. Some of my projects, you know, there were, there were actually six, seven people. If you look at my European project, there could be 20 people. So that, that I mean the, the team who would be the key participants and collaborators. Next one, please. Collaborate with other investigators. That is extremely important. You see, when I started NGU in 1987, Mahatma Gandhi University had no facilities. So I collaborated with RRL Tiwantram, then RRL Tiwantram, now it's NAST. I collaborated with the National Chemical Laboratory. I collaborated with the Rubber Research Institute of India. I collaborated with the Institute of Science in Bangalore. So I had lots of collaborators. Because MG was in the beginning state, we had nothing. So fill gaps in your expertise and training. That's very important. Art critical skills in your team. That is the importance of collaboration. It's always nice to have collaborative project team. Next one, please. Multiple principal investigators. Single PI model does not always work well for a multidisciplinary collaborative research project. For example, huge projects. Some of my huge projects are multiple collaborators. I do synthesis and characterization. Some of my collaborators will look at, will, will fabricate the devices. Some of them, if it is a bio application, some of them will do in vitro studies. Some of them will be doing in vivo studies. So we need to have big program. We need to have multiple collaborators. Additionally, we also need expertise. For example, when I started MGU, all my transmission electron microscopy was done in China, in Beijing. Because MGU, we could buy a high resolution transmission electron microscope, it cost around five crores. We got it 10 years ago. In the beginning, we had no such facility. You must have heard about sax and wax facility, synchrotron facility. Uh, I used to do lots of synchrotron outside the country. Therefore, expertise and facilities, in order to attain the required expertise and facilities, you have to collaborate. So you need to have multiple investigators. Next one, please. What are the review criteria? You see, when a project is sent for review, some of the questions are always asked with review reviewers. See, they always look at what is the significance of the project? What is the approach you have introduced? What is the methodology you have introduced? What is the innovation? Is something new to the, to the advancement of knowledge? The capability of the investigators is very, very important. On your environment, I can give you an example for environment. When I made a presentation in DST with the Professor Sienna Rao for a transmission electron microscopy, Professor Rao initially refused. He said, you know, MGU doesn't have an environment, that, that sort of infrastructure to support transmission electron microscopy because it's a huge investment. Then I wrote to the then uh, education minister, Mr. M.A. Baby, 
and he gave a letter of support. Government of Kerala put 1.2 crores of funding, and then we convinced Department of Science and Technology, MGU has the right environment because we get we are going to get support from the government of Kerala to have the transmission electron microscopy in MGU campus. Similarly, if you look at NMR, NMR is also very costly equipment because maintenance is very, very expensive. So they always look at the environment of your institution. Next one, please. Significance. What is the meaning of significance? Does this study address an important problem? If the aims are achieved, how will scientific knowledge be advanced? So these are some of the important points when you talk about significance of the project. Next one, please. Approach. Are the conceptual framework, design, methods, analysis adequately developed? That's a very important part. How do you really, if you're accepted, if the project is accepted, they will always look at what is the approach you're going to adopt, where it's integrated, whether it is appropriate to the aims of the project. I remember I had a big program with the Department of Electronics. They said every year you must come out with a, with a device. That was their mandate. Usually every project at the end you come out with a, uh, with a device or with a product. But Department of Electronics said every year we want to see a product. So I have to rework on the project. Does the applicant acknowledge potential problems, areas, and consider alternatives? These are also very, very important. These are also very, very important questions. Next one, please. Innovation. Does the project employ novel concepts, approaches, methods? Very important. When you when you present a paper in DST now, whether it's online or offline, they immediately look at. Are there any novel concepts? If the methodologies are new, are the aims original or innovative? If your idea is new, if your idea is innovative, I'm sure you're almost sure that you will get the project. So I request all my colleagues, when you write proposals, see that it is original, it is innovative, because DST will always, the experts will always look at the Google and see what has been done. Does the project challenge existing paradigms or develop new methodologies or technologies? These are some of the very, very important questions under innovation. Next one, please. Investigator. The team will always look at whether the investigator is capable. Does, it, does he require, does he uh, carry required uh, skills? Are the investigators appropriately trained and well suited to carry out this work? I get lots of projects from different parts of the world. I always look at the skill of the investigator. I always look at his past publications. I always look at his uh, previous projects. I already talked about the environment. Does the scientific environment in which the work will be done contribute to the probability of success? Do the proposed experiments take advantage of unique features of the scientific environment? Is there evidence of institutional support? See, look at, I have to show the letter from the government of Kerala that they will support or they will maintain the, uh, the transmission electron microscopy. Next one, please. Be realistic, not overly ambitious. Discuss potential problem areas. Discuss possible solutions. So you have to be very, very rational. You have to be very, very explicit. Otherwise, the reviewers will reject your project. Next one, please. What are the important points to be remembered when you make a proposal? Look at the first one is you should have a very good cover sheet. Cover sheet, you should mention the title of the project, all details, very briefly. It's an excellent title. A brief abstract. Executive summary of the program. Background review. 
at the end of the background review, you must say these are the gaps, significance, project description, what you are going to do exactly, maybe half a page. Project scheduling, how do you do that? For six months, second six months. If it is a five years program, you know, you have to really show every six months your program activities. If you look at DST project, it's mostly trees. So every six months, you should show what you're going to do. Biographical sketch of the PIs and co-PIs. What are the resources from your institute? Your budget. Budget is very important. You know, you ask for funding for machineries, uh, funding for the support of your uh, uh, research fellows, funding for chemicals, glassware. So there are funding for travel. So every funding part has to be explained well. That's what I mean, budget justification. You can also provide supplementary materials. If you have some results already, if you have, if you have done some preliminary experiments, you can show that these are my preliminary experiments. They will give you good, good results. So as a supplementary material, you can show that. Next one, please. Let me, let me tell you about the title of the program. It's very, very important. The title should be very clear and descriptive. Very, very important. Look at, I've shown uh, the importance of title. You should hook the reader. It's very, very important. Title is very, very important. Title should be concise. It should be novel. Next slide, please. See, I mentioned about the title. Title should capture the essence of goals and objectives. Must be informative, must be interesting. Conform to restrictions on length. Please don't make a big title. And when you, when you give a good title, you can also look at some of the projects in this area, conduct a market research. Very important. Next one, please. Abstract. When you look at the abstract, present a big picture. Abstract is very, very important. You know, some reviewers, sometimes they, they just read the abstract. The abstract is not interesting. They will say, oh, this project will be rejected. It should be very, very concise. Very important. Abstract should be very, very concise. Don't show a big abstract. Next one, please. The second important point in the, in, the, in the proposal is, you know, after title, the abstract. The second hook, at the chundaya. Now, it should be excellent abstract. Next one, please. The abstract should contain a concise review of the proposed project. Statement of significance, hypothesis, it's very brief. Methods analysis. Who, what, when, where, why, how, all these questions should be addressed in the abstract. So this should be, abstract should be prepared with a lot of care. Next one, please. Coming to the summary, introduction, executive summary, that's also very important. Often the only part of the proposal that all reviewers will have an opportunity to read, they will read the abstract, they will read the executive summary under introduction. And you must read it extremely, with extreme care, must provide conceptual overview, must generate enthusiasm, and your introduction should give a sort of roadmap. Suppose if you are uh, giving a proposal on designing a, a new material, for example, biomedical, then you have to give a good roadmap how you are going to do that and what has been done so far. It should be very concise. 
If you write very big introduction, uh, I mean two three pages, your project will be will be rejected. This concise, maybe one page, one half page introduction. Next one, please. So I have mentioned here what is the what is the first part of the introduction? Introduce the projects, educate the reviewer. Identify the gap in the knowledge. That's very, very important. What is the gap? And the gap area has to be explained very well. Next one, please. Describe your long-term research goal, the second paragraph. State the objective of the proposed research project. <laughs> Present your central hypothesis. Explain your rationale. All these things have to be in the second part. Next one, please. What is the third part in the introduction? Describe your qualification. The training, you say that, I have the required training, etc., etc. Describe your research environment. You say that these are the resources we have. I have access to many other research projects. I have access... Uh, to, uh, to many collaborators. I interact with many, many people across the block. So indicate all this very briefly. Next one, please. The fourth paragraph should in include uh, delineate the objectives and the aims of the project. Provide a reasonable number of objectives. Some of the proposals I get, they say 20 objectives. How did you project it? You show three or four objectives. Present the objectives in a logical manner. For example, if you are going to synthesize something, synthesis, you have a new chemistry on that. Then you, you say that what, whatever you synthesize, you have to characterize. And the third objective should be fabrication of devices. So you should have some sort of systematic way of presenting your objective, objectives. Next one, please. Describe the project innovation. That's very, very important. What is the innovation of the project? You must describe project's actual outcome. Some of the, some of the uh, funding agencies, they will ask, what are the outcome of the first year? For example, Department of Electronics, they were very, very particular that every year they want to have a product. Summarize the project's significance and impact. Fill a gap in the knowledge. Advancement in the field and see how this gap is need, uh, really filled. Next one, please. What is the research? Why you should, you should also say why this research is important. Demonstrate your familiarity with the field, literature review, preliminary studies. You have some preliminary studies, it's always nice. Whenever I go to DST or DBT presenting a proposal, I say that, oh, I have some interesting preliminary data. You can show that. Next one, please. Literature review, the very, very important. Cite only literature relevant to the proposed project. I remember a colleague of mine lost a project in DST because he showed 100 references. DST chairperson said, we will not accept your project. You cite only 20 or 25 references. Very, very key references. So don't write so many references. Cite only literature relevant to the proposed field. Don't try to be comprehensive. Critically analyze the existing literature. Situate your proposed research project in the field. Next one, please. Preliminary studies, if you have some preliminary data, it is always nice. Provide an account only of the preliminary studies relevant to the proposed such project. If you show something, some preliminary experiment is extremely nice. Your previous work, uh, demonstrate your experience. These are all very, very important for the success of the project. Next one, please. Project description. Organize the project description around the objectives. That's very, very important. 
try to devote an equal number of pages to each of the objectives. Use parallel structure to describe each of the objectives. So you have to organize the whole project around the objectives. It's very, very important. Don't deviate from your objectives. I get lots of projects. You know, in the beginning they say these are the objectives, but when you read that, we will find that the, uh, the PI is not really centered around the objectives. So you have to be very, very focused around the objectives. Next one, please. Title of objectives. Introduction to objectives. Uh, project uh, and design of objectives. Expected outcome of, these are the components of, you know, of the objectives. Next one, please. You also have to indicate the anticipated starting date of the project. If you look at the European project, Union project, they will always ask, international project, they will always ask what is the starting date. You can always look at the, you know, the, the, the project funding agency, you get this. You also have to indicate the milestones that you are going to achieve. And you have to incorporate the agency's requirements, include date of reports and other deliverables. Every project they will ask, what are deliverables? First year, second year, third year. Next one, please. Look at the, the milestones I have mentioned. See, if it's a three-year program, most of the projects I am running now with the DST, DBT, or uh, KCST, or uh, Department of Electronics, they are all mostly three-year projects. Milestone number one, milestone number two, three, four, you have to show like this. First year, second year, third year. Next one, please. Biography of the investigator is very, very important. Biographical sketch of the investigator. Highlight the accomplishment that demonstrate your capability. Don't write too much. Sometimes, you know, most of the, uh, most of the funding agencies, they will say, okay, show your best five publications related to this field. You can show that, you know, I have 100 publications. You can indicate, but they will show you best five publications related to this field. Next one, please. Again, biography of the sketch, biographical sketch of the PI, every agency has, every funding agency has their own format, name, title, institutional address, educational background, uh, publications, awards received, collaborators, you know, all these things you can see in many research proposals. Next one, please. Demonstrate that it is feasible to conduct the proposed research project at your institution. That is very important. You say that your institution is pretty strong. That is the resources of your institution. I gave an example when I went to Professor Rao to, to uh, when I asked for a TEM. He initially refused that your, uh, your university cannot support a TEM. But then finally I had to convince him. Facilities like office, laboratory, library, equipment, these are all very, very important. Uh, animal experiments, if an animal house, suppose you are uh, experiment, uh, I mean, uh, relates to in vivo measurement, then you have to have an animal house, your computational facilities. So please show your resources of institute. Suppose your uh, institute doesn't have such resources, you collaborate with. You collaborate with the Kannur University or Calcutta University or MT University or uh, Kerala University, University Center, you collaborate with the faculty. Next one, please. You also have to show the completed, ongoing, pending grant support. That's very, very important. How many projects you completed? That's a good, good point for you. So suppose you've completed five projects. Then you, these reviewers will have some idea. Oh, this, this researcher has good experience. How many projects are running? They are all very, very important. Next one, please. See, Many, 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 many funding agencies have their own format. The project number, PI's name, sponsor's name, etc., etc., for the complete or ongoing or uh, pending project proposals. Next one, please. Budget. That's very, very important. Budget is very, very important. The first statement I want to make is adhere to agency and program requirements. 
I, I have given an example for you. If it is a CSER project you are funding or submitting, CSER will never give more than 20 lakhs. ACST in, in Tiwandram will never give you more than 40 lakhs or 50 lakhs. But if you, if you submit proposals to DST, you can get cross. DBT, you can get cross. Nano mission, I, I, have, I have many projects in nano mission, uh, three crores, four crores, five crores. So you have to really understand the, uh, the money the agency used to give. Include only allowable cost. Make sure the budget reflects research projects, objectives, cop and duration. I remember once I went to DST and asked for a differential scanning calorimetry, but they refused to give me that. They said, no, this is not required for this project. You have to really substantiate. Then I had to buy a polarizing optical microscopy. Then I said, uh, you know, if this is not allowed, I'm, I'm really interested to have a polarizing optical microscopy that was a requirement for the project. And also, when you ask for money for travel, money for contingencies, money for chemicals, everything you have to substantiate. Next one, please. I have mentioned about funding, personnel, equipment, materials, travel, everything has to be substantiated. I remember once I submitted proposals to BR and I asked for three project fellows. They refused. They said, you have to work with one. We can't give you that. Next one, please. Budget justification. Extremely important. Every money that you ask for from the, from the funding agency, you have to justify. Next one, please. Vetting, editing, proofreading. That is very, very important. When you complete a proposal, you send this proposal to many of your friends. In a college, you can ask your colleagues to read that. They will find lots of mistakes. Show your draft proposal to a colleague. Very, very interesting. I know some, some uh, faculty members are very, very, uh, very scared to give a copy of your project to, my, to your colleague. They said they will steal it. No, they will never steal the idea. I've never, I see my, my proposals are read by many people. Many of my, initially when I wrote a proposal in 87, my proposal was corrected by my PhD advisor. He, uh, he has gone through it. So always uh, try to give it to your colleague. He will definitely give you good comments. Next one, please. Again, I have continued vetting, editing, proofreading. Very, very important. When you read some of the proposals, you know, the English is so bad, the cartoons are bad, references are wrong. These are very, very important. Some people will not give complete reference. Your project is likely to be rejected. And you also have to show new references. If you are submitting a proposal in 2020, you have, you have to have good number of references of 2019, 2018, and 2000 situations. Good number of references. The style, you have to follow the style uh, given by the funding agency. You have to follow that style. Next one, please. You see, forwarding, very, very important. See, I'm sure the college teachers, they have to forward the proposal principle. Universities are proposed to forwarded by the registrar. Remember that your institution will submit your application on your behalf. In some institutions, they submit the proposal to their own office. But in MGU, what we do is the registrar will give you the forwarding letter and the PI will directly send by, SP, by speed post or online. Allocate ample time to route your application for institutional approval. That is very important. Some institutions, it might take some time. If you're submitting a proposal without the forwarding letter of your institutional head, they will not consider. Next one, please. I will show you some of the evaluation sheets of funding agencies. See, look at the evaluation sheet of DST. I often review the DST proposals, CFCR proposals, DRDO proposals, DRNS proposals, proposals of uh, ISRO. Look at the DST, central DST evaluation sheet. 
the project is highly suitable for funding under CRC. Well-defined objectives, very good purpose. These are my some of the uh, comment I made. And you see the grading I've given is 9 out of 10. It was a very good proposal, I call. So this is the answer I gave to, uh, gave to DST after evaluating a project from National Chemical Laboratory. Next one, please. Evaluation sheet of CSIR. They asked for originality of the project, whether the project is original, technical feasibility, competence of the PI, whether duplicate of work or already done. So I always look at the literature, whether this has already been done. Is the methodology is correct, what plan is correct. Uh, CSR always look at the industry feasibility, whether this work could be scaled up. Look at the grading, 1 to 10. 10 is the top. Next one, please. Look at the evaluation scheme of KCST, Kerala State Committee on Science, uh, Technology and Environment. Suitability of the project proposal under, under the scheme, competence, facilities, almost similar to other funding agencies. Again, they are, uh, they are grading 1 to 10 scale. Next one, please. So once you have, see, when you submit a proposal, there are different possibilities. Sometimes if you are lucky, the proposal could be accepted without any change. But very often, I would say around 65, 70% of proposals of mine were sort of, sort of uh, came for revision. So you have to really review, respect the reviewer's comments. I made a statement here, review the reviews. Whatever reviews you got, you have to systematically study these and review them very clearly. Decide whether or not you have a viable project. If you don't, revise the idea or come out with a new one. If you do, revise and, uh, I mean, resubmit the application. Next one, please. So my, my, my request to all my colleagues is, you always look for good idea, good grantmanship, good presentation, and good review. I also wanted to emphasize the fact that some of the projects, you have to make oral presentation. Many of the DST, DBT, CSAR, step proposals, you have to really give oral, so you have to really make good slides when you, when you are called for oral presentation. Now most of the presentation online. Make good slides. Don't make so many slides, you know, maybe 10 slides or eight slides. Very, very key slides you make and a very good presentation. Next one, please. I put everything in sort of a few slides. Simple rules to remember when planning, writing, submitting application. I'm going to show you some sort of uh, summary. First slide, please. Next one, please. Do not, please go back. Do not write the application for yourself unless you are going to fund it yourself. I hope you understand that. You must convince the entire review teams. You're not going to allow proposal. The proposal you're writing is for a funding agency. You have to excite the reviewers. Next one, please. Study sections. Do not fund applications. You have to study. You have to study the granting applications. You have to study the requirement of the funding agency well. Number three. Next one, please. You must excite the reviewers and the funding agency. Very, very important. Next one. Reviewers are never wrong. Reviewers are never right. They simply provide an assessment of, of your project that you have submitted. Please remember this fact. I remember some of my colleagues got angry with the reviewers. Now, you have to really respect their comments. They're not 100% correct. They're not 100% wrong. Next one, please. 
Reviewer statements are never about you as a person. I have so many, many cases where the PIs fought with the reviewers. But you have to really respect. This is the same case when you submit a paper for publication. You have to respect your reviewers. Of course, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can write a counter. You say that you know this is my argument. The reviewer statement only lists some of the weakness, not all of the weakness. Very important point. I remember uh, when I submitted a proposal back in 1990 as a DST project, and the reviewer, Professor Kishore, Professor Kishore is no more now. He died from the chemistry department IAC. He said, Dr. Thomas, in the present form, I cannot accept. He said, you come to IAC, stay in IAC, uh, I mean, guest house, stay for a week, revise the project. So I had to go to IAC, revise the project, meet Professor Kishore, and then finally the project got accepted. So this is, this is, this is, you have to take a very, very positive stand when you get a, when you get the comments of the project. Next one, please. Always conduct, always conduct agency staff before you submit an application. Very, very important. Even the European Union project, you understand the mission objectives. If it's a DST project, if you have questions, you just approach them. Next one, please. Focus your application. State clear hypothesis. Make sure the specific aims are test your hypothesis. That is rule number eight. Next one, please. Propose mechanistic, scientifically relevant experiments. That is very, very important. Scientifically relevant experiments you have to really propose. Next one, please. Secure mandates and collaborators. Very important. You see, if you have multiple collaborators, if you are working on interdisciplinary subject and you have multiple collaborators, chances of winning a project is, I would say, very high. Next one, please. Finally, an inconvenient truth I'm going to tell you. You will not be funded if you do not submit proposals. It's a truth. So I request all my good friends to submit proposals. If you need any help, you can approach me or you can approach my colleagues in the university. We will support you. And we are going to give lots of, I mean, training program to write good research proposals under STRIDE program of the university. STRIDE, STRIDE is a new project supported by UGC Grants Commission. Only two universities were supported for STRIDE. One is MGU, another was Sri Shankara University. So we are going to have a continuous factor development program in the campus to support you. Next slide. See, I'm going to show you some of the funding agencies. Look at a CRB of Department of Science and Technology, BST Nano Mission, AICT. I had funded program from AICT. I funded program from all the agencies. KSCST of uh, uh, Kerala government. Next one, please. Next one, please. INSA. Next one, please. INSA usually gives sort of international uh, travel support. DBT, very good. I had several programs from DBT. UGC DAE CSR program. I am running now one. BRNS program, Bureau of uh, Nuclear Science. I am running a project now, BRNS. Next one, please. DIT, Department of Information Technology. Dep they are formerly it was the Department of Electronics. We had a big program from the Department of Electronics. We just finished, we applied for a new one. Next one, please. Ministry of Environment and Forest. Anything related to environment, anything related to forest, you can definitely submit to the Ministry of Environment. We recently submitted a big program to the Ministry of Environment using some natural polymers of uh, structures from the forest. Next one, please. Forest Research Institute. We'll get you funding. Next one. Department of Atomic Energy. Next one. Department of Education. Especially Social Science Faculties. 
Department of Food Processing. Food is a very important area, food packaging. Department of uh, Non-Conversion Energy Sources, if you're working on uh, Non-Conversion Energy Sources. Solar, you can submit proposals. Wind energy, you can submit proposals. Department of Space, we have several support from Department of Space, VSSC, ISRO. I also review ISRO projects quite frequently. Science and society related projects, social scientists can apply at the DST. They have a separate wing on science and society, wing of DST. Next one, please. The women component plan, you know, uh, science, uh, DST has a separate wing on women. They will also fund you. Next one, please. Research scheme on power. This is given by Central Power Research Institute. A good funding. ICAR, anything related to agriculture, ICAR will fund you. ICMR, we had a big program from, two programs from ICMR. Anything related to medical, ICMR will fund you. DRDO, we, 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 we had several, one I am running now, uh, we had several DRDO programs. They will give you very good funding, very close to one crore, two crores. ICSSR, social science faculty should always apply for ICSR funding. Probably you must have heard about imprint, a huge funding from ICSR under, under the umbrella of imprint. Under the umbrella of impress is for science. So you, you must apply for imprint as well as impress program. Next one, please. I will show you some, uh, some of the projects from European Union. European Union projects are huge projects, multi-million euro projects where we need lots of participants, including industry. See, if you want to have European Union project, you must register your name in this website. Today, you all should register your name in your European Union website. If an expert in certain area, they will, they will send you proposals to evaluate. Next one, please. What is Horizon 2020? Horizon 2020 is going to be over this year. Uh, Horizon 2020 was formulated uh, uh, in 2014, six years program, mainly to strengthen Europe. And Europe, uh, Horizon 2020 uh, promises breakthroughs, discoveries. They do fantastic work. They fund fantastic programs, projects under the European Union 2020 program. So the 2020 program is going to end this year. Next one, please. I will show you what is 2020 program. After 2020, the new European Union call will come, proposal will come. You see, they fund lots of area, agriculture, forestry, aquatic resources, biotechnology. They fund everything. Next one, please. Application process, you have to submit online. You have to have partners, European Union partners, uh, industry from India, industry from Europe. It will take, uh, from my experience, it will take eight months to write a very, very good proposal for European Union. Next one, please. Next one. I'll skip this. See, success rate of European Union proposal. In the past, it was, uh, it was uh, something like uh, uh, 20%. Now it's really less. I was told that recently, I was told by my good colleague in Europe that it's something close to 5% success rate. But you get really good funding. So I request all your colleagues register in the European Union website, monitor the course regularly, find partners across Europe, find partners in India, and submit very strong proposals. Next one, please. Mary Curie Action Research Fellowship Program. You know, this is a very nice program uh, for postdocs so from European Union. Good funding. Next one, please. I also wanted to emphasize the fact that the government of India signed MOUs with a large number of countries, could be more than 100. Argentina, Armenia, Austria, my research group could get funding under this program, DST to the rest of the world. We had successfully completed DST Austria, uh, DST uh, Canada, DST China, DST Croatia. So we are lots of project supporters to DST. There's not much money, but your scholar can go abroad and they can come here and it could be for three years. Indo-French program. 
you can uh, submit two types in a year. Indoor French for good funding. You get an equipment. You can collaborate with the uh, leading laboratories in uh, in France. Next one, please. This is also Cefipra. This is Indo French program. Next one. I will skip this. DST NSF program with the United States. Recently, we submitted a proposal under DST NSF to make a new mask, a trial air mask. Probably at the end of my talk, I will show you this. We we submitted a very good proposal during COVID time to the University of Atlanta, Georgia Tech. And uh, MG University, Mahatma Gandhi University, Assam University, Medical College, Kota, and we submitted a big proposal under DST NSF program. Next one, please. This is Indo-US Science and Technology program. Uh, this involves lots of programs. India workshop you can contact. Next one, please. Indo-German program. We have several such programs. My research group has several such programs. DST DART, DST DFG, DST BMBF, UGC DART. There are lots of programs under India German Cooperative Program. Next one, please. Now maybe I will show you some of the program recent calls. I will show you maybe some recent calls. Dr. Hanna, can you can you load some re recent calls? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just one minute. Yes. And also our our uh, new project. You know, we are submitted during COVID time. Dear colleagues, during COVID time, my research group submitted five program, five research projects uh, with the DBT, with the DST. Uh, I think DBT two, DST two, and India US one. Yes, you see, look at the the proposal we have uh, given. India, U.S. Science and Technology just showed you now. There was a call for uh, COVID-19, India, U.S. call. And deadline was May 15. We submitted a very good proposal. Next slide, what we have given. You know, what I did is uh, I conducted so many institutions. You know, we had several rounds of, several rounds of discussion under Zoom platform. I think four or five uh, Zoom meetings with the different institutions, with the Medical College uh, of Kottayam, Dr. Sajid Kumar, Indian University Center for Biomedical Research, the head of the Biomedical Research, a unit in Chivandram, uh, Assam University, and uh, uh, a university in the United States. So we have reached have a uh, university in the United States. So I will show you, next slide, what we have done. You see, this is our the summary of our program. Our mask is a three-layer mask, you know. And the outer layer is made of polyester, which is an anti-adhesive coating, a polyelectrolyte coating. It can repel coronavirus. You see, this coronavirus could be repelled by this coating. You can see the coronavirus repelled by this coating. This is made of uh, uh, polyester fabric, but it's a hydrophobic coating. And then the middle layer is made of, the middle layer is made of electrospun nylon. With na See, nanocellulose has been chemically modified with the positive charge. Because of the positive charge, if at all some virus is somehow getting in, you know, it, this layer can kill the virus. And the innermost layer is made of cotton, eco-friendly cotton, which is very close to your mouth. So this is the new mask design we submitted for the India-US program. And next slide will show you, this is the, uh, this is the totality of the mass design. And you see our, uh, our, our collaborators, Professor Mohan Kumar, uh, the director of our own center, 
I was uh, me and uh, Professor Carl Jacob from US and me the PIs, uh, Sajid Kumar from Medical College Kottayam co PI, Nandakumar Clinical, my colleague in the university co PI, uh, Prasanji Saha from Calcutta co PI, Professor Mukherjee from uh, uh, from uh, from Gandhinagar, uh, Rajasthan, sorry, uh, uh, Gujarat, another co PI, and we have industrial partner. Look at if the technology is developed, the industrial partner from Kerala is going to manufacture uh, this mask in bulk quantity. So we need to have such, we need to make such big teams for uh, submitting huge interdisciplinary projects. So I thank you so much for your patient hearing. And if you have questions, uh, I am really happy to, uh, happy to uh, answer. And if you need some support in writing proposals, you can contact my research team. You can contact my colleagues and my friends. Thank you so much. Please ask questions. You know, is there any, any questions? No, you, you don't have so many applications. It's better to show one or two applications. Very important application. Some of the fundamental projects of DST, they may not ask for application, but now our PM's trend is support mostly application-oriented projects. So right now, to get good funding right now, it is always important to show some application the engagement of industry, then you have more chance of winning the project. Next one, please. Hmm. It is always now, you see, DST has a special program for, uh, for uh, fresh aids. They will get up to 40 to 50 lakhs. This is called fast track program. I request all my good colleagues, if you are new, please first apply for the fast track project of DST. I was in the fast track committee. Even there was no presentation. We just look at the proposal and give funding. And you can also submit, definitely, if you are new, please show some collaborators. It's always nice. And also their facilities you can indicate in your proposal. Next one, please. No, you look at the website. Every day you must look at the website of DST, DBT, CSIR, you know, very easy. European Union website, if your internet connectivity is there, it's very easy for you. Sir, actually, most of the time we uh, knew about this proposal very late. Or no, you should regularly, you see, re regularly you should spend some time. Uh, is it possible to put a committee in university level or uh, something like that to inform the research? Yeah, my university, see, my university, our IQAC, there is a call. Immediately, IQAC will inform all the colleagues, all the teachers. But you, so, can, you can do it by yourself also. Information for the college teachers also? Yes. See, we also send all the calls to colleges too. IQAC of MDU, my office, and all the calls, the principals of our colleges. Okay, sir. But you yourself can do it. You can just log on to the website and you can get all the information. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir, I have a question. I'm a language teacher. So, could you please uh, tell us some uh, programs where we can apply for uh, uh, submitting proposals for language teachers? Apart yes. from ICSSR and uh, uh, UGC, MHRD. Language teachers can always submit proposals to ICSSR, Indian Historical Society. There are such agencies where okay. you can submit. There are not many. There are not many. But such proposals uh, supported. You know, DST has a wing of uh, 
स्टेट एंड सोसाइटी साइंस एंड सोसाइटी ओके सर आई हर्ड इट यस देयर इज देयर इज पॉसिबिलिटी ओके बट कंपैरेटिवली आवर गवर्नमेंट ऑफ केरला हैज अ सेपरेट विंग ऑन अ यू नो समिटी सपोर्टिंग दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ प्रपोजल्स ओके सर थैंक यू सर See, no industry will give you funding like that. You have to really knock on the door. You have to go to the industry. See, I got funding from Apollo. I got funding from Amarov. I got funding from uh, General Cable's USA. I got funding from Dupont. What I did, I went to Dupont, gave a lecture. Nobody will come to you. You have to go to industry. You write to them. That these are my capabilities. I am able to take uh, solve your problems. you should go to the industry and give a talk when i go to united states for acs meeting after the meeting i travel a little bit visit some of the industries and present my new data so you have to make them enthusiastic in collaborating with you good morning good morning sir good morning sir did you get my point yes nobody will come and give you money no industry will come and give you money you can also do one more thing and also do one more thing that mgu has started doing it invite every year major industries to your college when you make an interface meeting in get funding sir uh, good morning sir good morning i am myself i am dr lismita godwin uh, head of the department of pg and research department of home science we are dealing with the fields like nutrition textiles child development um etc so where can we apply for this grants which all agencies lots of possibilities you can submit to dst you can submit to the ministry of food science and technology you can submit to icssr you can submit to dbt you can submit to i mean uh, defense you will fit everywhere your expertise are very broad yeah you can get lots of funding okay okay sir just a nice presentation sir thank you sir thank you sir is it mandatory that we should follow the same methodology that we have uh, delivered in the project proposal in oh, between no, chat can we i tell you this is a general talk every funding agency has their own format you have to strictly follow that format i gave you a sort of broad perspective but my perspective if you look at any any program any agency you will find that their objectives are almost similar to this but when you submit a proposal please stick to their format no sir i mean the methodology of the work yes, yes. methodology title whatever i said is exactly same for example don't write very big title don't use acronyms abstract should be short okay yes, sir thank you sir definitely change every year there is a project meeting you can definitely present and you can change did you get my point yes you see what i did in mgu i started in 87 i submitted proposal jointly with many many big institutes indian research in bangalore national chemical laboratory you should go to this lab and talk to them find find uh, find faculty members who work in similar lines you see rubber research institute i have so many uh, uh, programs together because they work in the area of rubber science polymer science so you have to identify you have to identify your partner
You see, graduate students, you can write graduate projects. You see, the small money uh, KSCST will give you. That, the, that proposal should be maybe 15,000, 20,000 rupees they will give you for graduate proposal. Yeah. Otherwise, the DST, DBT will not. DST, DBT, etc. really want to have excellent new idea, new proposal, submitted by a faculty member. Look at social science. I don't know, my colleagues lost it. My MG University, several social scientists applied for imprint. Imprint you cannot apply around the year. You imprint, there is always a call. There was, uh, there, uh, I was told that there were 400 crores of Indian rupees for imprint. Don't wait for the next imprint call. You just write Google imprint, then you get the details. Why not? Why not? You see, my colleague in self-financing college, my former co-worker, Dr. Sony C. George, he's running many projects in Amal Jodi College of Engineering. He's running a DBT, he had a DST, he had a step program. It's a good example. He did PhD with me and then he was abroad and then he came back. He was in a university in Tamil Nadu. Then he joined Amal Jodi College of Engineering, one of the very good uh, I mean, self-financing colleges. And he's running so many projects. I request all the self-financing colleges to follow Dr. Sony George's model. I will collect the Sony C. George. Excellent. Next time when I address you, every faculty member should run at least two, three projects. You imagine when I when I started MGU, there was nothing. I waited for my room at least two, uh, for two months. We had no room. Now you see uh, where we stand, MGU, number 30 in the country. We have 1,000 universities. MGU has gone up to number 30 in the country now. Within a, We have a history of only 37 years. So if there is a will, there is a way. Sir, one more question. Uh, is it possible to do the research projects uh, by the faculty members which do, who do, doesn't have the PhD? Very difficult to get the project. Okay. First of all, first of all, I request you to get your PhD first. Otherwise, what you do is you cooperate with another faculty who has a PhD, then you could be a co-PI. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, so I think we can wind up the section right here. Uh, it Excellent. Was Thank you so much. Excellent presentation. Uh, for organizing my, 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 my talk and the college principal. And I'm thankful to you. And if you uh, need any support, you can contact me. Uh, I, I want know. many, many projects from Kerala to be submitted to uh, central agencies and international agencies. Uh, sir, uh, this, uh, this program was organized jointly by the internal quality assurance cells of St. Jesus College and the Morningstar Home Science College. And next, I invite Dr. Sister Rosely, Principal, Morningstar College, Angamali, to propose part of them. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Dr. Sabu Thomas, Dr. Sister Asha, Principal, St. Joseph's College, IKC team members, dear participants. On behalf of all of us, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Sabu Thomas, Vice Chancellor of MG University, who in spite of his busy schedule was kind enough to accept our invitation and spend his valuable time and knowledge with us. He is an enthusiastic researcher and administrator who has motivated and guided many others into research work. Thank you, sir. My deep gratitude to the principal of St. Joseph's College, Dr. Sustasha, for her cooperation and support. I offer my thanks to the IKC team of St. Joseph College and Morningstar College for the effort they took in collaborating this event. Special congratulations to Dr. Nigel, the coordinator of the program. And most of all, I would like to thank all the participants for their kind cooperation in this event. We believe that you have all been enriched by this session, which will definitely benefit your future endeavors. May God bless you.